Piranha 3D is a 2010 horror movie directed by Alexander Aja and it stars Elizabeth Shue, Stephen R. McQueen and Jerry O'Connell. I'm back with another Patreon request from Jeffrey Mussman. This month he wanted me to review Piranha 3D because Crawl came out this month um, and it comes out next month in the UK so I've still not seen that and it's directed by Alexander Aja so it's quite fitting for me to review Piranha 3D this month. After a sudden underwater tremor sets free scores of prehistoric man-eating fish, an unlikely group of strangers must band together to stop themselves from becoming fish food for the area's new razor tooth residents. This is only the second time I've seen this movie. I watched it way back in 2010 at the cinema so looking at it nine years later I thought I wouldn't remember a lot of this film but when I was watching it I did remember a lot of it I remember it being a lot of fun but I thought to myself after nine years when the gimmick of 3D is gone will I think the same anyone who loves Jaws notice the obvious nod to Jaws at the very beginning of this movie with Richard Dreyfus in a tiny little boat. After what happens to Richard Dreyfus's character at the beginning, it doesn't let off, it keeps on going at 100 miles an hour. Even when we don't see the piranhas, we get introduced to these characters and it's not just standard characters, I think everyone in this movie was very charismatic and fun. Even the annoying characters were fun as well. You knew that most people were going to die and get eaten alive, but I think that the introduction to all the characters were great. There was a lot of comedy in this for a horror movie. It was a comedy horror and the comedy that they used was very, was very childish, very childish comedy but I couldn't help but laugh all the way through it. It's, it's one of those kind of comedies that you shouldn't laugh at but you really do. It was a very lazy script as I would have expected even when I first seen the film. The reason that they didn't close the lake was because of spring break. It brings in too much finance to a little small town so it was understandable that they didn't want to close the lake as soon as they found out something was happening. Um, so yeah I kind of let that one slide but what I didn't really let slide was they went to this aquarium to find out uh, what what this species of fish was even though they could tell it was a piranha and Christopher Lloyd's character was introduced and as soon as he saw it he knew everything about this piranha he even got a little book out to the exact page that he was looking for to find out what kind of piranha this was how old it was it was very convenient it wasn't totally annoying it didn't take anything away from the movie or the script itself it was just very lazy script writing as for the negatives though that's all the negatives that I had for the movie one of the biggest positives for this was it done what the men Meg should have done. You had this Meg with Jason Statham on this beach with all these people and there wasn't one drop of blood. Obviously it wasn't an R-rated movie. There was not a drop of blood, not a victim in sight even though there was this massive Meg that could have just ate everybody up. But what they'd done perfectly in Piranha was they went to the spring break, it attacked almost everybody and I thought that was excellent. Obviously you don't like to see people dying but the way that the people were killed again was quite funny and I don't know if it should have been funny but it was. But I t they all attacked everybody and that's what they should have done and that's what they've done in this film. Something that was missing from the Meg was included in abundance in this film. You've just seen everybody getting eaten no matter who they were, even the main characters were getting chewed up and the effects in this were great, especially in this scene. There was a lot of special effects, especially the, the scenes underwater with all the fish. Uh, that was to be expected, but the the scenes, quite a lot of the scenes with all the wounds, it was all practical and I think that was great. There was a scene with Jerry O'Connell, the, they used uh, prosthetic legs on him, which again, it was, that wasn't lazy, the script was lazy but the practical effects certainly wasn't and I think the practical effects, even though they look cheesy and cheap, that's what made the film even better and again that's what made it even funnier. At the height of the boom for the 3D movies were in 2009, 10 and 11 I think it was and obviously Piranha came out in 2010 so I went to see it in 3D and the 3D was good in the cinema. If I watched it these days in 3D at the cinema I would think that's just annoying now because 3D is quite annoying now and when you, this happened in Friday the 13th part 3D when the intentionally give you 3D moments, put something at the screen. They do that, do, they do that, sorry, in this movie and that was quite annoying. There was, there was only maybe only three or four scenes that they tried to show you some sort of 3D gimmick and so the 3D gimmick was annoying but it wasn't, uh, there wasn't too many 3D scenes but when they, those scenes happened it, it was quite annoying. I thought the ending was great as well. There was one character, I won't mention it because I won't see any spoilers in this film but there was one character that we were all rooting for all the way through this film. I'm not going to tell you who it was. You didn't want him to die. I'm, I'm assuming that most people didn't want this character to die. And at the very end, when they found out that 
something happened to these piranhas or there was something about these piranhas that they didn't know until Christopher Lloyd's character found out. He contacted them when it was a little bit too late and then one of these characters were killed at the very end. Again, that just adds to the comedy to this film and it adds to the the point where we don't know who's going to live or die. For the type of movie Piranha 3D was and the type of movie that they were going for, a remake comedy horror, I was very surprised that with the cast. Uh, we had Elizabeth Shue, Ving Rhames, Stephen R. McQueen, who was pretty good in this film, uh, Jerry O'Connell, who was fantastic, Adam Scott, who was great. This cast, even today, would be a good cast for a movie, any kind of movie. So for them to be cast in a 2010 horror comedy remake was quite unique and rare. And I think that's what made this movie great, not only with uh, Alexander Arger's direction, but the cast themselves were all great. Like I said, not too many negatives. Even watching it for the second time, I'm thinking this is a really good movie. It got a, not a great score on IMDb. The critics didn't like it. But looking at it, I'm thinking there wasn't much wrong with this film. They'd done what they meant to do. It was meant to be comedy. It was meant to be a comedy horror. And it was meant to be cheesy as well. And I think that they achieved everything that they set out to do. Overall, guys, I think it was a pretty solid horror remake. And I think it was a worthy... Uh, entry into the horror remake category. So thanks again to Jeffrey for recommending me to review Piranha 3D. I am looking forward to seeing Crawl in a couple of weeks time when it re gets released in the UK and I'll probably do a movie review for that at some point. I'll maybe not do it when it comes out in the cinema because it's already been out in the US for quite a while now and maybe do it when the Blu-ray comes out or whatever but I'm looking forward to that one. But again thanks very much Jeffrey for asking me to review this one. Have you guys seen Piranha 3D? If you have as always leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of it. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching again. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.